Morning, everyone. Morning. 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 Just so everyone knows, uh, John sent me a um, uh, email that he will not make it today. John is in John, John, our John, chairman. Our chairman. He is. He said I won't be zooming in Thursday. He won't be. Correct. So, Dave, Bill, and I. There's a lot of echo and feedback, Alan. Um, and you're muted. So I, I don't know what, what's causing this. Um, uh, we are the only three committee members uh, or on the call right this, this moment, correct? I believe that's true, right? You, me, and Bill. Yeah. Well, the, I would give Tony a few moments. I'm assuming she, I'm, I know she's aware of this. Although the three of us, I believe, do constitute a quorum of a five member committee. I was looking for Kelly Lyman. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gonna take a little bit getting used to. I actually don't even know who the new superintendent is. Peter Dart. He's hey, right here. Peter Dart. Peter That's Dart. It. What a pleasure to meet you, Peter. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. Uh, I met you uh, once on one of our Goodwin walks in the morning. Oh, gosh, yes, I do remember. That was actually uh, in, that would have been in 2019. Yep, exactly. And yep. Um, you, I remember a conversation because I know that you were looking to get out of Hartford to find a job that was a more reasonable commute. <laughs> uh, that was and, part uh, of the commentary, I believe. And yeah. um, leaving aside other issues with the Hartford Public Schools. And um, you knew full well that Goodwin was going to be closing in two years. And with that knowledge and with no promise of future employment, you took the job. That's, did. that's my memory. Yeah, uh, very good. I'm impressed. Yeah. Uh, it, needed, it was needed to have a job, that's all. Uh, well, a, a, a job with uh, heart and vision. Uh, it, it was a bit of a, I had painted myself into a corner in Hartford and uh, needed to remind myself uh, what it's all about with teaching and learning. And I knew Kelly in this district were just amazing. Uh, so it was an opportunity well worth the chance of uh, jumping in on regardless of how it, how it was going to end. And it obviously worked out very, very well. It did. Yeah. Amazingly so. Did you know we were building a new elementary school when you came? Yeah, well, that was thing. part of our conversation, that this uh -huh. was a job for school that was about to go out of existence. He knew it, Yeah, he took it anyway. Yeah, it, uh, when I was hired in uh, 2018, Kelly said, okay, so the good news and bad news, 
Good news is you have a job if you want it. Bad news is maybe we're closing the school. You know, this is prior to the referendum and vote. Uh, and I was in a situation where I was like, you know, four years in Mansfield is still like a win for me. Uh, I had a lot to learn from Kelly in this district. Uh, and uh, there was a bit of a quality of life, you know, of uh, slowing down. And like I said, uh, I had found myself in Hartford. I was in the ninth floor of the G Fox building in a, a sea of gray cubicles. And it, uh, it was pretty lifeless. Uh, so the idea of getting back into a building and being in a smaller district was very appealing to me. I am uh, in the process of texting Tony. The G Fox building. <laughs> when I was a kid, there was such a thing. Yeah, right? That was such a big deal. Yeah, I uh, we moved into Connecticut when I was in middle school and it was right at the end of the G Fox legacy. So I remember the kind of Christmas display in the, the big atrium. It's beautiful yeah. what they've done with the college there. It, uh, it yeah. still has pieces of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good use of the building. Yep. Yeah. But that was also back with Sage Allen and- uh, oh, Ron Thompson. Ron Thompson. I know. Ron Thompson. Kresge's was down there and yeah oh yeah the state theater oh yeah I remember remember them all very well yeah mm -hmm. okay I just texted Tony um yeah as she sometimes texts me when I when I might be a few minutes late and given the hour and the amount of people who are involved in this meeting um I'm going to get it started. If it, unless there's objection from Bill or Dave, I'm going to get it started. And at um, whatever it is, I want to say. I agree, Paul. Everybody's here. Okay. Um, the first item on the agenda is call to order. And the change order discussion, I don't know, um, Alan and Paul. Um, and anybody else, how you want to run it. I have questions. I would start by opening up to um, Paul um, to talk about it and Mike. Okay. I just got a response um, from Tony that it was not on her calendar and she is joining soon. My suggestion is that um, we started off, and if your suggestion, Alan, if I heard that correctly, because the, the, the chime of Tommy and Tony's incoming text uh, um, may have interfered with it. Well, let's start with Paul. But I want to really start with a more global question so that we understand it. Who, who, um, who hired Summerhill? Are they our, uh, were, were they, um, and who designed the specs? Start with that, this is really, really basic background um were they a contractor or a sub two who hired them and the specs that the, they were their responses to um the emails sent out uh, from uh, paul's office paul's uh paul jorgensen's office electrical engineer um has some complaints about the uh about the specs as justification for the uh, change order so let's start there paul uh, good morning everyone can you hear me yes Okay, great, great. Um, I, I'm taking the meeting remotely like everyone else uh, from a, a, not from my office. Um, so to back up to the very beginning, Summerhill is a subcontractor of uh, Imperial Roofing. So the project was bid out that the roofer typically, they will hire the subcontractor of the PV company to do that that portion of the work. So the contract is held between the town and Imperial Roofing and Summerhill is Imperial's subcontractor. So that's the, the chain of command, if you will. The specifications that Summerhill is following 
are truly set by our, my office, my, our electrical engineers, Mike Chambers and his team uh, designed the system for the building. So they bid on that system. And what we found out is that there are, um, there have been changes to uh, that system and probably the biggest change, and we were not aware of this during design of the project, was that the school was getting a generator. The, our design did not include a tie-in between the PV array and a future generator. So that was a change while they were ordering the PV equipment. We were told that they put that order on hold because they needed to meet with, uh, and I don't know if they met with you, Alan, or who with the town to go over the requirements for the generator and to tie that equipment into the generator. So that was a change right there that we did not account for and was kind of an unexpected at the beginning of the project when Summerhill came on board. Um, so that is one of the claims of an extra here is that they were, they delayed ordering their panels because they needed to make sure that they they ordered the, the equipment changed slightly to be able to tie it into the generator. And Mike is on the call here, so he can add any technical information, um, you know, that I, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I don't know the, the, the details of the system the way he does. Um, but that is a definite change to the system, the way we designed it. Um, so we understand that that is one of the basis of this change order extra is that they uh, change the order of the panels for this new component. Um, there are other portions of the change order which we've reviewed as well. And the, the piece I can speak to the most is the roof attachment. During design, it came to our attention that this system on roofs that are over one and a half pitch which are uh, a number of the roofs will require fastening down to the deck. And we understand that, and this has come up on other projects where if there's a determination by the manufacturer that they need that attachment, we have added that in other projects. So that's not uncommon. And I did review those attachment points with the roofer. So that portion of the PV extra is legitimate in my opinion to pay them to add blocking and fasteners for the rail system uh, that the solar panel uh, people would be installing. Um, Mike, I don't know if you wanna continue on with the list of I, electrical or if there are other questions. I want to, um, uh, Paul, uh, at least um, for my, uh, in terms of getting this thing done in an, or, an orderly fashion. And since Mike actually um, was the um, one who um, I believe um, uh, propounded the questions um, to, uh, to Summer Hill, um, Tony needs, um, I don't know, uh, Kathy, I don't know if you um, are, um, uh, responsible for uh, sending the emails um, or could you please send the email with the link to Tony? I realize that your mic is not on, but uh, the, uh, the screen says you're here, but she cannot uh, locate the email with the link. So if you could send that to Tony, uh, Kathy, um, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see Bill. Uh, oh, Bill, you're on the phone. Um, you could send that to Tony, that would be uh, much, much appreciated. And I just you. sent it to her. I just sent thank it over. You. Okay, You're Kathy, welcome. thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Okay, my question. Um, wait a second, Dave, I want to do an overall Oh, I'm thing. sorry, I tell you first. Uh, um, for Bill and for David, and I'm sorry, I actually, I actually sort of um, took this out of sequence. We have one through four, don't we? Look, I, I printed out the email, one through four. Um, the first one is um, uh, asking for a cost analysis, second for cost, uh, increased cost of the solar PV modules, and down the line. 
Paul, um, might it not help for organizational purposes if we did them one through four? Exactly the way the correspondence between Mike and Summerhill went. Might that help you, Paul? I think it might help me as a as yeah. a as a as a as a non-expert layperson say, all right, and then describe number one. Um, or if you think Mike's the best person to describe it, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I would you. I think Mike would be uh, because these questions came directly from our electrical department. Okay. Mike, um, I'm glad you, yeah, I guess I see you've unmuted. So um, it says here in number one, can we have the Summerhill cost related to the roof attachments broken out um, and uh, from the costs that appear for PV material and increases due to general escalation? I'd like you to um, look at Solar, uh, Solar Hill's response and then tell us what this is about and why should we or shouldn't we approve this. Go ahead. Sure. So number one, like you were talking about, um, basically Summerhill had presented a change order of just a lump sum of like 41000 for for their change order portion. And they, they didn't break it down whatsoever. So we wanted a breakdown of material cost, labor cost, and everything so that we could compare um, basically to what the original costs were for stuff. And basically, this, this first portion is the one that Paul was talking about that we feel is absolutely, um, it, it should be approved. Uh, this, this has to do with the attachments that because we are in a certain seismic zone, um, it requires it. Uh, PV attachments to the roof structure if for anything over, I believe, like a three uh, degree slope, which is, which we're well over that. So that is something we, the contractor found out uh, as we were finalizing this. And therefore he found out there are 24 attachment points that we need. And so that first one is basically him saying what the cost for the hardware is, the material and the labor for those uh, certain attachments. Okay. And then along yeah. with that, there was also a roofing portion, which was another like seven or eight grand. So the, the, the PV portion plus the roof portion comes to approximately like 12 grand for the attachments. And that, that portion we are uh, adamant with that, that that should be approved and it's reasonable. Um, Bill, Bill or Dave, do you have any questions about number one? Is number one the cost? It's the breakout of the cost, yes. We have an increase in cost from the original? Yes. And how yeah. much is that total? I mean, nuts and bolts, down to everything. Well, yes. they, the, the, the contractor uh, in, in our design documents, we did not call out, we didn't specify these fasteners for the, ra the rail system. So in their bid, they did not include a price for these attachments. If, if we, of course, if we had put it into the documents, you would have paid, you would have, it would have been part of their bid originally. So we feel like as it, as long as it's fair value, and I did go over how long it would take them to put each of these attachments in, we think that this is, is fair value to the town. You're getting good value for these fasteners and it is a requirement for this rail system. So that's why Mike said that we think that this is a valid uh, portion of the change order that we're not, uh, we, we've confirmed. Okay, because okay. the original was going to be a ballast system. Correct, and there's still okay. there are still ba there is ballast on this system still. Mm -hmm. It's just we're adding fasteners also. Well, I'm I'm glad of this system. I do not care for the ballast system. I I literally live across. I, I'm a thousand feet from this building. That's where I live, so I know it gets quite windy here when we mm -hmm. get storms. Yep, and I'm more comfortable with those panels being fastened. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And like you just said, David, the, that's the exact reason why the, they're, they're needed is that we did not realize during design um, that we were in this type of seismic zone and that any type of seismic zone in this specific one requires them because talking with the manufacturer, they said anything up to 
approximately a one and a half to 12 slope would be acceptable. And we're at, I believe, 1.25 to 12. Um, but it's like you said, because of the wind, because of the seismic zone, that that is not exactly true. Well, I'm glad that it was paid attention to because I, I know what it is up here. Are these a better quality panels because they're newer? Is there a change there? So the both types of panels are considered tier one, which uh, means they're, they're both comparable to each other. Um, the efficiency is very comparable. The wattage is comparable. Uh, you know, the size of, of the actual panels are comparable. Like uh, looking at the cut sheets uh, side to side, it, it, they're basically the, the same thing, just a different manufacturer. Okay, I'm satisfied on number one. Um, although I, and I'm sure that, that Mike, uh, a bit, a bit, a bill. This one uh, says uh, the cost for the attachments includes so much. That's not the total number, though, is it? Is that the sixty-three fifty-five? Is that the total figure? So that figure is the figure from Summer Hill for them to buy the materials and their labor. There is okay. labor associated with the roofer as well. Okay. Um, so that uh, 6355 is not the complete total. The, the roofer then adds on an, another 717280. So that portion together, uh, let me just, so really want to play comes to, you know, 13, 5, 28, and 48 cents. So th right. that's the combination of labor and material and everything for the fasteners. What was it, 13, what, 13 something? That was 13, 5, 28, and okay. 48 cents. That's, yep, thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with your answers, Mike. Uh, Mike, one number number one was sort of a comment, which I hope you don't consider to be uh, in any way snarky. That does your, on your next on your next job, um, <laughs> you will uh, you, you will obviously take this uh, uh, what zone, what kind of a seismic zone you're in into account um, as as uh, photovoltaic is priced, and uh, so be it. Mike, I would like you, and Paul, I would like you to move to number two um, in terms of the replacement of modules. Um, and uh, Michael's, the question reflects Michael's lack of, that he doesn't understand why, you, why um, the original price wouldn't have been locked in since the panels were submitted in October of 2021. And um, again, this relates to the generator. So um, could either Paul or Michael um, address this aspect of this? Now we're number two, we're doing this sequentially. Um, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you wish, Paul. Uh, yeah, I, I think I can speak to it, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Michael. So basically what, what this was, as stated in that email, we, we got submittals back in October of 2021. Uh, everything was approved, the layouts were approved, and it was under our assumption that, you know, uh, everything was going to be purchased and the project would be going ahead. Well, we found out, you know, months later that we were receiving other submittals for, you know, new panels and all that, and that they had told us that they held off because of the generator project. And from this and speaking to him, it makes it sound like that they only purchased the panels to be um, directly uh, delivered to the site and that they don't have the storage capacity to store these uh, pallets anywhere. So according to him, because of the delay with the generator project, the panels were not purchased because they had to wait until it could be purchased and brought directly to the site, which would have been a delay of, you know, five months or however long it ended up being. And so because of that, he's now saying that there's an increase in the cost of the panels, which we were fighting back at first saying that, well, aren't you locked into the original price? And he's saying there's escalation and all that. And it's, 
this is one where I, I can't speak to that it should be fully guaranteed to him because in, in our mind, uh, they purchased this project at a certain cost and therefore they should own that cost whether or not, I mean, it happens all the time. Uh, wire is vo volatile as well, that the cost of wire increases exponentially. And, you know, some businesses have gone out of business because of that fact. And they're, they're saying that just because of the increase that they are due the, the difference in what they had bid it with and what the cost of the panels are at the moment, which also increases the, the labor increase as well. So does, does he have some leg to stand on? I, I would say partially because it did get delayed due to the generator project, um, but I would have liked to have seen the panels be purchased and had them be stored somewhere, even if they had had to, you know, get new storage space and, you know, uh, pay for new storage space. And then, then I would see that whatever the, the difference in the, the storage price would be like, yeah, that, that could be reasonable. But I mean, they're, they're basically just saying, oh, we, we couldn't, you know, store them anywhere. So we didn't purchase them and waited and, oh, surprise, the, the cost had increased. So there was a business decision made by uh, the, uh, the solar subcontractor um, to not, since they apparently did not ha have some kind of dialogue or discussion about, all right, we have a storage problem. There was no such discussion. Right. And rather than do that, they waited until the site, until the, um, issue with the new electric, the electrical system was resolved and then bought them at a higher price. Um, yes, that's, that's exactly what I'm happened. trying to break stuff down to his component parts, Michael. Yep, yep, and, and, and you're right. There, nothing was ever stated to us that, oh, hey, we're A, not purchasing them because we don't have the storage space or we're delaying this or, you know, for any reason, uh, we were never informed that. And so when the, the change order came up, we, we thought that the change order was going to be purely for the fasteners and the labor for that. But then when we saw that there was, you know, an increase in the PV panels, materials for like everything, um, you know, an increase in labor, that, that, that's why this meeting has been delayed so long because we were so shocked and had to do our due diligence to really figure out what was behind everything. Um, and I, like I said, we, we were not expecting the, the extras whatsoever. All right, um, Dave, Tony, and Bill, starting with Bill. Uh, the question of the uh, uh, generator, is that just a matter of timing or was anything changed in the panels because of that generator? So nothing changed with the panels, nothing changed with the inverter, nothing changed with the racking system besides for needing fasteners. So that's partially why we're like, okay, well, why couldn't we have this done and then do the tie-in after, you know, the generator is in and after the new switch gear is in and has the breaker to support the PV. Um, there's, there's nothing that says that after the roof is being done that they, they can't go on and also put the PV panels on at the same time. There, there's no reason they needed to wait until the generator and I have not gotten a reasonable response from them as to why they waited uh, as long as they did. Um, um, Dave or Tony, Dave. Okay. Uh... I'm the politician here, so obviously I'm a bit upset. Now, Michael and Paul, I, I feel you guys are being sincere, so it's nothing personal. I mean, obviously, I, I don't like this. So uh, let's get right to the bottom line here. How much is it going to cost us, and when can we expect installation? So last I had heard... Um the installation was supposed to be completed. If, if everything goes according to schedule, the installation will be completed, approved, energized at the end of October. I've been in contact with um, the PV installer uh, regarding uh, contact with Eversource for the interconnection agreement, which is a necessity in order to connect to their grid. 
And so that he's on top of that. And that's in line with the, the latest schedule that I had seen. So from everything I've heard and seen so far, uh, the, they're, they're right on schedule uh, to, to start shortly. And if, if they do that, then like I said, the, the schedule should be done at the end of October. Uh, but depending on, I, I don't know if they're going to delay working if, if we delay the, the change order. And, and I'm not saying approve it right now. I, I just don't know, like you said, how the politics of this are, are going to work out. But if everything goes according to plan, uh, at end of October, everything should be done. Okay, um, Bill. Mm -hmm. have a, and to, um, Tony is not asked, is not participated. Tony, go ahead. First of all, my apologies. Or you can take over the meeting too, I don't care. <laughs> no, no, my apologies for, for not being here. For some reason I didn't get the notice and it wasn't on my calendar. Um, and thanks, Paul, for notifying me. It took me a couple of minutes to get the computer up and running. Um, Dave's second question was, what is the bottom line? And that was my question also. Hey, what's, the, what's the bottom line on number two? Exactly. The, the bottom line of it is that we feel that they should have been um, tied into whatever the the first price that they had given for the price of the panels and everything. And that the fact that we were never informed that they were delaying purchasing of everything for whatever reason, um, I, I feel like that's, that's not, they didn't give enough uh, reasoning for it to be acceptable. The bottom line question, let me re reinterpret it because my, my bottom line question may be a little different than yours, but I think Bill and I are on the same wavelength, which is the difference between the cost of purchasing the uh, purchasing this material, PV modules um, uh, and mounting equipment and so on, um, as per their bid and per what they had to pay later after, of course, prices have gone up. What is the what is the add-on or the increase for number two? The bottom line. The, the bo yeah, that's that's how I define the bottom line. Yeah, line. I agree, okay. but this is the number. What do I write the check? Well, just well, for that number, right? Number two, right? Just only for number two. Not as it I will get number one. Um, number two, yes. I don't get. And 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 your your uh, question. Um, well, it refers to price, original price and so on. We don't have numbers here. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, so uh, I, I have that right in front of me. So for the, the increase in the uh, anything for the mods, inverter, racking, uh, labor, overhead, profit, all of that, the original grand total was 125.068 and 88 cents. And the new updated cost is 1610638 and that's a total increase of 3599750 uh, i just realized that that includes the attachments as well um, which is included elsewhere so that difference would then be we're talking twenty nine thousand six forty one and eighty two cents. With all the attachments, all the nuts and bolts for the uh, that that what, what I was just speaking to is just for for number two, like the increase in like labor and the material price. Um, the the total increase with the all of the attachments and everything that increased. Thirty-five thousand nine hundred ninety-seven and fifty cents, and that's that's for for Summer Hill Solar, and then that's still adding on the additional for Imperial. Okay, you said that number ends up being an actual increase of twenty-nine grand plus. And the, the attachments, I, what I'm hearing, I think I'm hearing Michael say is that the attachments is something that, that we're responsible for anyway, and it's included in the project cost elsewhere. So I think he just took it out of this claim. Am yeah, I right to avoid us being charged twice for the same thing or the same increase? 
So, so basically, in number one, we had spoken about the the cost of the attachments and all that, and which came to be the sixty three, fifty five, and sixty eight. And I have the uh, little spreadsheet in front of me, which shows the original versus the updated costs. So the original uh, uh, obviously doesn't show any of the attachments, and then the updated cost, which is the thirty five nine nine seven. 50 that includes everything but i was trying to break it down um to take the attachments out and tell you that the the 29 had to do with the the increase in materials and the increase in labor which that portion is i, I think is not not necessarily guaranteed to him whereas the 63 55 68 for the attachments that is reasonable so i was trying to break it down into like two separate areas if, if that makes sense yes i i feel it does tony, tony um, in the bill. We, we're still way under the the our original estimated cost for this project right yes i can look at what the original yeah, so you were like by a million dollars uh, i i have two proposals I don't really think we ought to be haggling over pennies here, and I think in basis compared to the cost of the project, this is pretty small potatoes. So uh, I would suggest either that we just pay it and get it over with, or that we split the difference. So the splitting the difference would be the penalty for not talking to us about it earlier. Bill? I would like to continue to number three and four as we were doing before, uh, you know, we may or may not be spent or decide to spend much time in those, but I would like to. Yeah, continue. I agree. I agree. I, I don't disagree with Tony that, that we shouldn't haggle over small potatoes, but I just, I think that what Bill's suggestion is, which I agree with, is that we at least get the best possible education on every element <laughs> of the change order. And yeah. then Tony's comment was really what I consider to be a global comment. Um, as to look at this in the big in the big picture of, of, a, of a seven figure bond issue uh, bond issuance, which is she's right, but let's let's get a little more detail on three and four. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, just quickly to Tony's point, um, the project cost was estimated and told to the state at six hundred nine thousand six hundred fifty five dollars. So we are well under that. Okay. Um, um, well, yeah, let me go back to three, then I can speak to three, that. Three, increased labor costs for the PV installation, and, um, <coughs> and um, their comment um, to Michael's uh, question was, my team of experienced installers that we've been working with, blah, 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 they have 42% increase on labor costs due to- You can hear you, Paul. Um, and um, no price increases in labor for four years justifies this increase. Um, Michael or Paul Jorgensen, if you're still, if you, I realize you're muted, um, either one of you um, or anybody can really speak to this 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 number. It's also not clear in, in, uh, in number three what the number is, but please help us understand. Yeah, so, um... I'm a little shocked with this as well. Uh, I, I don't think that because there's been no like labor increase in the past four years, I don't think that guarantees that they should, that you guys should be paying them because they haven't been paid what they should be paid just because all of a sudden they, the labor increased. Um, to me, this is easily, they, they, they're, they're locked into a price I would have said from the start of the project and I would see no reason whatsoever that labor should increase for any of this. The only labor increase I could see should be for the additional components, which would require additional labor, but not at, you know, a 42% increase. Bill? <laughs> well, it says the 42% increase in labor costs due to vastly high Overheads. I don't understand how that, uh, how the overheads apply to labor costs. Maybe, maybe you can educate me. But, or... I wish I could educate you a little more because um, I, honestly, I, I reached out to him as, after sending the emails and tried having a phone conversation, and everything that was said was 
I, I did not comprehend what, what I was saying would not get through to him and what he was saying would not get through to me. So uh, we kind of, you know, stopped that conversation because it was going nowhere. Um, but no, I'm, I'm beyond confused why, how that would um, in, impact the labor. I mean, you're, to, to me, you're, you're installing a panel at one price, five months later, you're installing the panel at the same exact price. I mean, it's not like it's taken uh, two times as long or one and a half times as long <laughs> to install a panel. Um, I think he's basically just trying to say, well, my overhead is way too high right now. So I need to make some money on this to, you know, so that I'm not losing money. I, I think that's what, what the bottom line is. Um, I guess the, the, um, I understand that the uh, total requested increase is um, all told is what forty one thousand and change, but um, what is what in in your in your number three, Michael, or again Paul, because um, Paul is the is the project architect. Um, how much money are we talking about? Is it, can number three be breaking down? Broken down? Yeah, let me take a look at that if they've broken it down in anything. If it can't be, we'll move on. But I'm I'm concerned about it. And I think we don't need to discuss the national rate of inflation. We know it's high. Um, yeah, at the moment. I'm not entirely seeing that broken down and what they gave us. They gave us a breakdown and like labor for the um, the new fasteners for, for the roofer and Summer Hill. There was a breakdown for that, but I believe in their new cost that they gave us, which showed the breakdown of the original costs and the updated costs, I believe that the labor is lumped into the, the several different sections for the racking, the panels. Um, the, the only thing that's broken down differently in here is administrative labor, which they say went from 96.83 to 11.118. Um, but that, that administrative labor more has to do with um, the labor for the applications and the going back and forth with the racking manufacturer to figure out the fasteners and changing the layout uh, of the panels and everything to to get it to work with the, the roofs that we had. So that administrative labor doesn't um, <clears throat> dictate the what number three is. I, I believe, like, like I said, that the labor is included in with the several different um, line orders that they have. Okay. I'm beginning to understand that. Tony, you had your hand up. No, I, I'm, I'm perplexed with that sentence about labor and increased vastly higher overheads. That sounds like a contradiction in terms. I mean, overhead is overhead and labor is labor. I, I don't understand why how they get lumped together. I don't really know. I and and Tony, uh, this is, yeah, th this is Paul Jorgensen. Um, I, I agree with you, Tony. And one of the things we tried to determine in this change order is why we would be paying more labor for certain items when the reality is that sometimes, and we have seen uh, escalation of products and materials, we, uh, we, I expected that they might try to uh, submit a change order like this for the escalation of the panels themselves, because we're seeing that on a lot of projects, not just this one. What surprised me was the addition of labor escalation, which to me in a fixed fee contract, we wouldn't need to be paying that. We were not entertaining a higher labor charge because they bid a certain price. If, if materials, materials outside of their control are costing more, then sometimes there's an argument for uh, uh, an escalation charge for materials. And that's where 
um, your suggestion earlier, a global suggestion of splitting that difference out of their control might be a good idea. But uh, I, I'm sorry, I digress. For item number three, I don't think it's clear. They haven't made a clear case of what in, uh, labor cost would be. Agreed. And if this is Doug, um, yeah. And if you know they, they the fixed the what they bid on that labor rate should hold. Um, you know, if there's increases in cost, well, you you get picked that up on new jobs coming in, but the ones that are out there, yeah, you you hold your price for labor on those. Like Paul said, if it's uh, material costs outside of control, that's something we can talk about as we are. But labor is strictly within their control and in house, so. I, to me, I agree. They've made a good case for it. And okay. Unless you want to be nice. I don't know that we should okay. really be talking about it too much. Are, are, is the ahead, labor Tom. market so tough that they had to dump, essentially increase their wages by 40% in order to have enough people to finish the project? Not that I'm aware of. I'm uh, not, I mean, I know labor, getting hold of labor electricians and that is difficult right now, but you know, that's everybody's got that same issue and nobody, none of my other jobs am I hearing about, you know, 40, 50% increases in labor costs. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Is there an increase in time that they did, that this? There's a, a slight increase in time because it's gonna take some extra time, um, you know, to, to go through and install the, the fasteners and, uh, but that that's really the only increase in time and that that might you know push the the project back slightly but we're not talking a, a lot because there's obviously some man hours involved with that um but there's there's nothing that i could see a time a change in the installation of the panels the inverters the wiring uh, anything like that it's it's the same amount of panels it's the same system size it's the same inverters that they were playing. so yeah so michael did you see a man hour number i mean is there because you mentioned man hours but is there a higher man hour number now than five months ago or that's vague uh, the, the only man hours that they break down on here are the specific man hours to the fasteners for the roofer and for Summer Hill. They, they don't break down the man hours uh, elsewhere where they say, okay, now it's going to take, you know, 120 hours versus the original contract was 100. The, the only one they break down is for the fasteners. So we don't have a clear picture of what they're talking about for labor clause. It's vague. Yes. Not on number three. Um, well, so there's nothing in, in, in the materials that have been presented to the members of this committee that has a number in it, that has a, that has a number in it, Dave. I, we're all, all of us are in this, are in the, are in this, are floating in the same boat. Um, I want to go on to number four, which is the attempt to clarify the, uh, um, reason for the increased administrative labor costs for delays and changes. And we already know that the, um, up, uh, there needed to be some changes in the, in the, in the design for the, um, for the new, for the new um, electric, uh, for the new um, system. Um, and the question is that, the, I guess, um, The, their bottom line is in the last thing they wrote with Brendan, who was from the solar project, they wrote to Michael, the amount is the total project cost, including, like, they didn't break it down one through four, including labor and administrative increases, fee, and not just increased material costs. It's actually 17%. Who's he talking to? Rather than 28%. Who's he talking to? Bond price. <coughs> So help me understand this, please. Somebody, somebody, any volunteers? I, I, I understand it. I, I, I did process engineering for several years and I did purchasing and stuff. I understand it. Okay. I agree with what Tony's saying because you know we're in a spot here. 
I don't like to be played on this, but we're under budget and we'd like to get going and splitting the costs. I think what Tony was mentioning is reasonable, but you know, I understand to me. What do you understand? <laughs> I understand that, you know, the unsaid thing, somebody at the other end there, this solar company is, I feel is padding things up, taking advantage of the inflation and the labor cost. And, you know, that's what I understand. It's a government job to them and they feel that they can throw a couple of extra things on the fire. I mean, Michael seems to have scrutinized the job well enough to know that yes. he can't figure out what the costs are. Yeah, because well, the fish smells pretty bad. So we have to decide. Um, that's what we got to decide here. I'll split the cost so we can move on. Or um, what else can we do here? Well, they would have to agree to whatever. If we give them, if we offer an amount less than what they're asking, then they have to agree with that or they could walk away from. From doing uh, the job. Right. And that, and that, I think that's not, that's, that is a a fair concern that was underlie Dave's statement and that Bill said out loud. Um, in my mind, I think that the uh, cost, the the, uh, the increase um, in the 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 uh, the, uh, the, fa the failure to um, um, properly um, their costs related to um, the the slope. Uh, as to where as to where the PV the PV installation will be, um, I heard Paul and Michael say we own that one. Okay, yeah, certainly. So I, I heard that one. So that one we would approve. It's the rest of the stuff. I tried to break out two, three, and four separately, mm -hmm. and um, I was unsuccessful. Michael was unsuccessful. Bill. Uh, our contract is not with uh, Summerhill, right? It's with Col or with the uh, Imperial. Is that correct? Yes. So I, I don't know. Is that Col is that uh, Imperial's pro problem, or I mean, they're submitting the the, the the change order, but they're changing or submitting from uh, Summerhill. Is that correct? Yeah. So if that makes any difference. Yeah, you're, you're, you're correct, Bill. Everything goes through Imperial. So if, if say, the, the change order came through Imperial, uh, Summerhill gave it to Imperial, who then, you know, passed it along to everyone. Yes. The documentation and everything we received from Summerhill, uh, after our questions and all that, all of that had to go through Imperial. So we would basically be responding to Imperial, and it could partially be Hey Imperial, this is your sub. Like this is on you to like figure this contract out. If if we're saying like, yeah, we're not going to pay this whole amount. We're paying you know half of it or or whatever it is. Then it, that would go directly to Imperial. Granted, I'm sure the PV contractor would come back and have questions and everything, uh, but everything would be going through Imperial. Tony. So if we decide not to pay the full amount of the change order request, does Imperial have to pick up that difference or does Summerhill? It, it would be a discussion between Imperial and Summerhill. Uh, I'm sure Imperial would tell Summerhill this is on you, but then they would probably have internal uh, arguments to, to figure it out. Uh, but if, if that's what you're saying, then, then yes, it, we're basically throwing the ball in their court and saying we're not paying over this amount and you figure out where the rest of the costs whose pockets coming out of. Okay. All right. Um, I am um, in my mind, um, I've heard at least from my, I've heard from myself, but I think number one, um, that the, uh, there were PV material cost increases um, that were quote unquote, our fault. And that was, um, and that was the uh, again the failure to take account, into account the, uh, the 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 slope. Our bad. We uh, we own that. The rest of it, um, I think we're and I think we should pay that. 
should approve that amount. Um, the rest of it, I think that we we are, we are as far as the remainder of forty one thousand minus number one, which is about yields about thirty five thousand. Um, should we agree to pay half and deny half, or should we look at this in the big picture of the overall project, which was the very first thing Tony said when she joined the meeting, and throw up our hands and approve it? I think David was suggesting that we uh, uh, more split the cost of the uh, of the disputed charges. The six thousand plus is is, um, is for number one is undisputed. I think it's to cover the things that are are our, yeah our responsibility the, the, or whatever. And I want to hear from Bill, but I also know this, and I'm alerting Paul, Doug, and Alan. Um, I'm looking for some advice and recommendations. So, Bill, you, you did want to say something. Well, I just want to say that for number one, the total is 13,528. The total was so. okay, 13,528. Is that correct, Mike? I think. Yes, that, that, that is the number that I came up with for, yeah. for both. For number one. So, I think, yeah, we that's our bad. We get it. Um, the uh, Silver Petroselli works for us. So, sure, we get we get we get that one. So, it's the, rem the remainder. And do we throw up our hands and say, pay it or come back with something different on that? I wanna hear, this is again, me as temporary chair running this meeting, as well as just a member of this committee. I want to hear from Silver Petroselli, um, and this is probably Paul because you're at the management end, um, as well as Doug, who is, our, our, um, our watchdog, as well as Alan, who is, uh, who works for the, works for obviously for the town. What do you think, how do you think, what is the best strategy and what, what we do, period? Um, I, I can start with that, uh, Paul, if you don't mind. Um, Please, I, I want you to. I think that um, I, this is one of those um, difficult, uh, situations that we don't come across often. Um, if the contractor does come across um, supply chain issues or, or material costs that are outside of their control, and we discussed this with the roofing earlier in the project, then it, it truly, um, the cost could be split with the contractor. So I think that some of these panel costs, if they, if the reason that they uh, delayed buying the panels is they were unclear about how this system tied into the generator, which I think is part of their argument, then offering to split that cost with them, to me, is, uh, make, is reasonable. Um, to say that we don't, with a fixed fee contract, labor uh, or, or, you know, vague labor charges can't be automatically assumed as part of this increase, I think is, is our defense. And they haven't, they haven't explained or described why they should be due extra labor charges for this change order in our opinion. So it, it, it's a complex issue, but I think the approach of saying we were offering to pay for X amount of the increase in, in material is probably the correct way to address it, in my opinion. Paul, how do you react to what I said, which was to take care of number one ourselves, 13, 5, 13 comma 528 and change, and then do what you said on the rest. Do you, do you agree that it's fair to separate out the failure of our contractor, who is you? Yes. To, uh, uh, to separate that out and say, we pick up 100% of that, we own it. As for the um, increased labor charges and other things, including their failure, or maybe um, uh, the contractors, the general contractor's failure to have any discussion with us about the storage issue means that we should split the difference 
on everything they're asking for, which is 41,000. Take out the 13,328, which we, which we agree to absorb and split the difference on the rest because for the reasons you articulate, by the way. Yeah. So that's what you're but, saying. You're saying you agree with that as, as I was throwing that out. You're saying that that sounds fair to you, Paul? Yes, that, that is exactly how I would uh, recommend breaking it out. I hear from uh, Doug, who's our watchdog, yep. and from Alan, who is our who's, um, who climbs roofs for a living. Uh, <laughs> he want I want to hear both. Okay. both. I want the committee to hear from both of you. Okay, that's uh, your recommendation. Say. I heard Paul's recommendation mm -hmm. on behalf yep. of Silver. Yeah, this is uh, Doug. Um, yeah, I would agree. Um, number one, the uh, additional cost for the fasteners, absolutely, that's something we should pick up. Cost. Uh, I, Cost of the additional panels, personally, I think we probably should go with that. Yes, they probably should have brought up the storage costs and that. Um, I'm a little irked that they didn't, but I, I think at least as a major covering a majority of that cost. Three and four, the additional labor, to me, I don't think we should be paying you should be paying for that at all. So I mean, if it was it was me, again, I would pay for one and one and two or a good portion of two. Um, maybe, maybe pay 75% of two and say, okay, the rest is on you guys because you didn't raise the issue. But, <laughs> but I, to me, they have not substantiated the labor costs for three and four at all that I've heard anyway. So that, that's my take on it. My, my concern is, you know, if you come down too hard on them, and I don't know what your schedule is, maybe you can afford to have this thing drag out. But, you know, if it goes back and forth again, you know, maybe this ends up dragging out into the winter. You know, if they're, right now if they're looking at completing in October, if it drags out another couple of months, is that going to be an acceptable option? So that's the other thing to me to consider. Um, because I know there was already some paperwork that came back from, I believe it was Eversource, that we missed a deadline for something. So I don't know where, how that all comes into play. Uh, yeah, I was just about to comment on that, Doug. So yeah. thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with, with Doug's comment on the timing and everything, uh, with regards to the ZREC application, which we just um, redid and sent into Eversource. So basically, uh, the initial in-service date was set for July 1st, and with the delays, that wasn't feasible. So then Eversource came back and was like, well, you can take, uh, you know, we can extend this date six months if you pay another performance assurance, which was like $780 or something like that, which is something that once when the project is completed, the town gets that money back, but we paid for an extension of six months. So depending on how long the project got, you know, delayed, that could push us out of that six month period where it needs to be up and running. Now, granted, you can pay another performance assurance after that to push it back six months more, but obviously the less wire transfers and the less you know, money out of pocket uh, would be more, would, would be better. But that the six months would give us until, you know, January. So it would have to push the project back pretty substantially uh, in order not to meet that. Okay, this is under a thousand. So I don't want to spend too much time on, on that one. Alan, I'd like to hear from you. Okay. Um... I, I agree with pretty much everyone's assessment. I mean, my my thoughts on this a little bit is um, truthfully, like the, the part with hooking up to the generator, we had that discovered probably in March or April, at least in that time frame, and we had already worked out those details. I didn't even see any reason why the solar contract, because I think the roof was primarily done in April, why they couldn't have started back in April. That's what we were talking about originally. I think some of the delays have been on their part. So yeah, I think you're being good by splitting the labor with them um, for anything extra with them. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, in the fact that they didn't order stuff, there's no reason why yeah, there should have been a conversation uh, they could have ordered that way at the beginning. We could have figured out a place to warehouse it, if nothing else. And, you know, that's, yeah, I really don't know why they didn't talk about that. So is it, is, is our contractor, Alan, part of that failure of communication? 
I mean, it's, this is this is solar companies. They're got. I would have to say so. Yes, definitely You're not on this call. Correct. I think Imperial should have raised the issue. I mean, that's assuming, of course, Summer Hill even told Imperial. <laughs> but if Imperial knew it was their obligation, I think, to let the committee and the town know for sure that you were looking for additional cost or at least extending the schedule. All right. Um, we've asked the questions. We've heard from our experts who don't completely agree. And I think it comes to, it's, it now is upon us to make a decision knowing that there might be some risk at kicking the ball, the, kicking the can back to Imperial saying, we're fine with this. And I, there are two different formulas as to how to handle two through four. Um, one, of, one of them is to, um, um, more or less um, honor, honor, honor number two as, as much as, as we, we swallow it. Um, and the other, or partially honor number two, um, and then reject three and four, which is sort of what Doug was saying. And the other way to go would be to basically Split the difference on everything over thirteen thousand three two eight, which is what Doug was saying. And um, obviously, we have concern by getting this project done timely. I don't care about another seven hundred dollars to the utility company. I care a lot about getting this project done. And I hearken back to Tony's first comment, which is. Um, this project has a lot of money in reserve, and if this is the final change order, and I don't want to misquote you, Tony, you were saying let's not um, haggle over over stuff that is this small. Or let me give you a chance to really say what how you now you've heard everybody. How do have you change? How do you? How, what's your view now, Tony? Um, my view is that we don't know all the answers and there is some fault somewhere, uh, which is why I would only pay half of it, half of the labor and overhead for three uh, and maybe four. I don't, I don't quite understand where four is right in this minute, but those areas where we have dispute, um, I would still pay half. I, uh, once, we, once we pick a number, then we're going to be haggling over hundred dollar increments or decrements. So it's not worth the time or effort to do it in my book. So we send the message that there were problems, but we pay half of it. With the exception, I think of the 13,328, which will, which we, which uh, we should, right. we should own because we still for Petroselli works for us. Um, okay. And so what you're doing is basically um, paying three, 13, three to eight, splitting the difference, offer, and or offering to split the difference on the remainder. And that will need to be something this, all of this stuff has to be authorized by a vote of the committee. So um, um, I am gonna formulate a motion because we need to do it. But I also wanna hear from David and, uh, and Bill as to whether Tony's way of thinking is the right amount to pay and the amount to offer for, for, for the rest of the project in the interests of uh, moving on. By the way, I don't dispute David's comment about why is this being done? Of course you're right, but <laughs> Um, I the agree. question, the question is, what's our, what's our best strategy, D yeah. David and, 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 and Bill? I agree with what Tony is suggesting. I, I, I support that. I mean, you know, it's a little bitter there, but, you know, I mean, that's, that's business, too. I mean, we got a big project here, but I, you know, I, I fully agree with uh, Tony's perspective on it. Bill? Yes, I agree uh, that we should pay the 13528 and split the rest. That's fine. I think, you know, we don't want to, we do have a project we 
want to get done, but we also don't want to be seen as a doormat to, to uh, arguments that don't have really much meat on them. I mean, it's, this is hard to tell anyway, so. And another point is, do we articulate our uh, reasons for our decision when, when we make this offer? Why should we? They haven't articulated theirs very well. <laughs> Okay, um, are there dollars and are there cents? Are there cents? Uh, Thirteen three two eight. Um, I did not take good notes. Are there any cents? I have to be really precise on this. Are there any um, cents involved on that one, or uh, Michael, or if not, I'm just going to frame a potential motion um, as thirteen three two eight. I think it was, uh, was it five no. to eight, Mike, or, or three to eight? Three to eight, even. Okay, I, I'm fine. I'm not. I don't. I don't want to be bothered by sense anymore. No, I mean for the five. Was it five to eight or three to eight, Mike? Do you have that number? Or? Three to uh, eight is actually what you said, Bill. Yeah, okay. I'm just getting that up real quick, just so that I can have an exact number. In my notes, I have thirteen five twenty eight forty eight. Thirteen five twenty. Okay. 13528.48. Thank you, Kathy. 13528.48. Forget the sense. Your motion. I'll second it. All right. I, uh, let me frame a motion is that, um, that the committee um, accept um, the change order in the following res respect. First, we agree to pay. 13,528.48 um, in full. And that as to the remaining requests for change orders, we agree to pay 50% of the remainder of the 41,060.76. That was requested. And if my numbers are wrong, tell me. But that is a motion. David? Second. All right. It's been moved by me. I recognize myself for the purpose of making a motion. Seconded by David. Further discussion or feedback or more precision from anybody? Uh, Paul, just one second. Uh, so uh, with, with the there, there's still the the 15 percent markup and and everything on all of this um so i just wanted to say that the the total price of the project should be 61 sorry price of the change order should be 61 117 187 um and then if we take the 13 528 and 48 off of that we have 47, 588, and, and 80 cents. What was the number? Say that again, please. Second number again. The, the second number is 47, 588, and 80 cents. Yeah. Uh, give us 50% of that, what that number is. The 15% the included on that was the 61,117 and 18 cents. No, no. The Five zero percent. Oh, the fifth. Yeah, sorry, I apologize. So fifty percent of that, we're talking twenty three thousand seven ninety four and forty cents. So my motion, with numbers attached to it, is that we agree to pay um, thirteen thousand five two eight point forty eight, and. Offer to pay 50% of the remaining change order, which is 23,794.40. Michael, am I correct? That's correct. And I'm I'm hoping that Kathy that, that Kathy is, uh, is 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 Kathy has not um, raised any questions um, about our numbers. So the motion properly understood. It was, is, it, is it we are is that we are um thirteen thousand five twenty point forty eight in full 
What is the total? A 50% of the remainder. That 30, that 50% sum comes to 23,794.40. That is what's before you. And it's been moved and seconded. Is there anything else that anyone would like to say? So that, that no. total is like 27 grand something, right? Is that correct? Yeah, the total that we are that we believe we are responsible for is hold on one second. Michael, can you give us the total? Yeah, so the, the number that I have in front of me right now is 37,322 and 78 cents. That, that would be the 23,794 and 40 cents added together with that 13, 528 and 48 cents. So do we want to round that up to a, like a 38,000 or, or 38,500 or something? I don't know. So, I mean, these are pretty imprecise calculations we're doing, but. It's what we've got. I mean, it's, it's presented to us this way. And I think that unless they're doing rounding up, rounding up across the board on this project, we should probably uh, stick to the sense. This is my, this is my own thing. I don't know. Um, I like the fact that Lord. we're saying this number is 50% because it says we're splitting the difference with you. It yeah. doesn't say we agree to pay X amount for this person's hours and X amount for that person's hours. We're saying we're splitting the difference. Yeah, we're, we're not saying we, we say we'll own this number one and the rest yeah. we, we don't really get it why you're, but we'll give you something just because we're wonderful people. No, no, it's because it costs <laughs> us money to negotiate these things too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, I think you all understand the motion. It's been uh, repeated. The numbers have been, but the, you understand that there's a conceptual framework. Um, and there's also, there are also precise numbers. The minutes should reflect both. <laughs> In the absence of further questions or comments, um, I'm going to call for a vote. Um, I see all committee members are on the screen. So please raise, please raise your hand if you favor. And it's unanimous. Um, that the motion is approved. And um, that's uh, the next step is, is up to the is, that, is up to the team to have this properly communicated and um, so that we can move on. Everybody is there, uh, Bill, do you have a question? Uh, does this go to uh, Imperial or, or, or does uh, Paul and Mike send it to the or someone or what's the process? I hope there'll be a conversation. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not seeing that uh, Paul is uh, Paul Jorgensen is still on this call, but I would think normally the architect would communicate this to our general contractor, and uh, either Paul from his own participation or from uh, working with, with his colleague Michael um, would uh, understand what it is to communicate to our general contractor, and then. So on down to uh, the solar cell. Does that sound right? I, I believe that's correct, Paul. Um, I, I just want to get in touch with Paul Jorgensen. Uh, yeah. I think he's in a, in a meeting right now. So uh, I, I'm almost positive that it will go through SPA to Imperial um, <laughs> with, with stating, you know, the numbers that were just stated out here and, and that communication will happen. Um, but uh, that's typically... Paul's, like you said, on his management side that, that it's done. So I don't have as much experience, but I just wanted to verify with okay. him and don't want to give you guys any bad information. This is, this is a, um, I don't want to get that deep in the weeds. Um, I think the, Michael, your job is to basically work, communicate with Paul as to what the committee's action was. And then the next step uh, flows logically and with the chain of command, as I understand it, is Paul works with Alan and uh, then uh, we, we presumably the, uh, the project goes out. Right. Yeah, typically that's what happens is Paul would respond back. Okay. And, uh, yep. Since we've done our, accomplished our business, there's nothing further on the agenda. And um, David, you are moving to adjourn? Yes, I am.
and De and Bill, you're seconding it, and Tony and I also support it. So <laughs> our meet our meeting stands adjourned. Thanks to all of you for your participation, and thanks to the staff for going with the flow and really doing the very best you can uh, to make sure we're making a, a an informed decision. Okay, Thank you, Eric. Enjoy the rest happened, of your day. I don't know what happened with the notification to me, but I, I cannot find it on my computer. So and I can't uh, either. That I did came, not get one either. That came from Mike. Mike yeah. Well, I don't uh, yeah. know if it adds to my calendar, I get it on the calendar. I so see. That I, Hey, it's well, meetings places. and meetings adjourn, but I think yep. there needs to be a, a fix in terms of how committee members are notified. Alan, I'm going to sort yeah. of put the ball, put put that one in your court, okay? Okay. So there, there's still there's will still be business, right? I mean, we still we're not finished with this project. No. Oh, no, no, we're not. The, no. the project goes on. Um, there's just this meeting, which is limited to the change order. Um, has accomplished its, its mission and we can't discuss anything else. But hopefully next time we talk, we'll talk about how uh, the solar is all on and it's all good. Right, so, yes. That's all. <laughs> that's all. all right, meeting meeting is over. Thanks to everybody. Okay, bye -bye. Yeah, thank yeah, you very yeah. much, everyone. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.